At the southern end of Africa's Great Rift Valley lies Gorongosa National Park, a vast, unexplored wilderness devastated by civil conflict. Now, the park is joining forces with biologist Edward Wilson to create a research facility like no other, the E.O. Wilson Biodiversity Laboratory. Together, they're bringing some of the brightest minds in science to Mozambique, discovering Gorongosa's secrets, nurturing the next generation of champions, and restoring this once mighty ecosystem. My name is Josh Daskin. I'm an ecologist from Princeton University. What are the consequences of losing most of the large mammals from an ecosystem? For me, that's one of the obvious questions here in Gorongosa, one that could keep an ecologist busy for several lifetimes. In 1977, the CIA took satellite images of this whole area as part of their surveillance during the Cold War. By matching those photos with ones from recent times, we can say that there's about a one-third increase in tree cover across the park. It's a safe bet to say that that's probably because there are fewer elephants around to knock over the trees. More trees is usually considered a good thing, but in the savanna it's a little bit more complicated. Gorongosa was once home to huge herds of large grazers, like buffalo, wildebeest, and zebra, animals that need wide open grasslands to survive. The park plans to restore these populations, but first we need to make sure that it has the right conditions to support them. My field assistant Flavio and I are doing our bit by investigating what the impact of all this extra vegetation is. My name is Flavio Artur. I'm 22 years old. My job in Gorongosa is assistant field to help people from Princeton University. When you enter the woodland, everything changes. It's shaded forbs begin to dominate, and trees grow closer together. It's a great habitat in its own right, but a pretty terrible one if you happen to be a grazer. Today we're doing what's called ground truthing. It's where we come out in the field and measure all the trees, count the trees, to confirm that what the satellite images told us is the reality on the ground. This plot is about one hectare in size, and Flavio and I need to count every tree. We'll probably find about 70 of them. It can be repetitive work, but there's always something new to discover along the way. Oh, kind of good eye. There are all these little tiny froglets hopping around out here, and we've captured one. And uh, they're very young, they're not adult frogs this size. They seem to be living in the leaf litter here, staying nice and moist in this humidity. And uh, we'll take them back to the lab and identify them. Flavio and I have been working together for about a year, and he's really come along as a trainee technician. He's proven himself to be a real asset to the park science team. Knowing there's been an increase in tree cover in Gorongosa means the bulk grazers may not recover as well as they otherwise would have. Do we wait for the elephant population to recover and re-establish some open areas, or should we consider doing that ourselves? The science has led us to a super interesting conservation question. Small steps on a journey of a thousand miles. Each new discovery bringing Gorongosa closer to its original vibrancy and hope for all of the world's wild spaces along with it.